So this was the first piece I did with California African American Museum, probably in 2005. Um, and it, it had a collection of objects in it, and you could go inside and sit down. This one was um, in New Orleans, post-Katrina. Um, that environment really was an, uh, interesting for me. I, and, and so I, what I did was you walk into this installation, and it was almost like you were looking down into the hull of a boat or a basement. And so I put those shoes on the wall. I collected a bunch of random shoes, and then there was two hallways you could walk down and kind of be contained in and sit in the space and see your look in a mirror. So this is just this kind of bizarre, kind of surreal environment that I was creating. Most of the installations had sound, a sound component, or still do. And at the same time, this, 2000, this brings us to 2008, I moved back from New York to California and was kind of done with, thought I was done with doing the miniatures and wanted to really stop. I think a lot of artists get in a place where once they get some recognition, they feel obligated to make a specific type of work. And so I, I got to this place where it's like, okay, I'm getting known for a very specific thing. I need to be free of that. I moved back to California, and it was right during the recession, so trying to survive as an artist was not the easiest thing. And for probably about six months, I stayed with my mom, and I decided I wasn't making art that I thought I could sell. I was just going to do what I wanted to do. So I started a website, and every week I would take everything out of my mom's garage, and I would put, um, I would install some kind of image, something I could shoot, put like a sentence of text, and put it on this website. So people inviting people to just come see this weird installation. This is the first one I did. I took all the stuff out except for a few boxes, took my mom's dining room set, <laughs> put it in the garage, photographed it, and put it all back. Um, and I, I could explain each one of these, but it would take a long time. But you can kind of create your own story about the idea of having this space that is kind of, you know, your dining room table. So much happens there. And what happens when you put it in storage? You know, what happens, how, does, how can it become a metaphor for a lot of other things? This one is a little dark here, but um, those were uh, paint canvases of paintings that my stepfather had done. And... Um, so I just put them all backwards. And he used to always go outside and smoke cigarettes and sweep. And so I was like, oh, for some reason, I feel like I need to put this broom in here. I literally stuck it there and let go, and it stayed by itself. And I was just like, oh, my dad's ghost is here. <laughs> and I shot the picture and, and so that I have some very personal connection to that. It's a beautiful image. Okay. Um, found a, this is part of that series, found an old piece of furniture that somebody had left out to for the trash, said free on it, went, took it, put it in there really, in my girl in the garage, photographed it um, with the birds around it, just like the contradiction of the white birds on the, the old chair. Can't remember what I wrote with these. I, that website doesn't exist anymore. This is one of a series of pieces I did at uh, the University of California at Santa Cruz. I was a visiting artist there for a semester, and so every week I would go do a different installation inside of the gallery, in this side room in the gallery. Um, and so this one, as you can see, is a lot of hash marks and a swing that you could actually go inside and swing on, and there were different sound pieces for each one of the installations. Um, and there is a frame, I believe there's a frame on the outside of the room. So when you'd go sit inside of the space, it was you became the art. You know? So people would come in and look at you and kind of get to be a voyeur of you being part of the art, which is a theme that I think for me from the time I started doing the installations, even with the Inventing Truth, there's something for me about us as viewers being able to become the work in some way, just as viewers or um, as actual participants. I feel like I... uh, so at that same, all the, I had a lot of things happening at the same time. So at the same time that I was doing this, I started working on a, um, I was doing a few video pieces. So I did a 20 minute uh, video piece and was doing a residency in the Bay Area. And um, the next slide that you'll see is, is an image from that. So I created this very large room and started shooting in the room. 
And this is actually, this photo is actually the way I show the photo, but the, it's upside down, right? So the chair is hanging from the ceiling, and there's a, a life-size, um, a life-size seesaw that you could sit on. And so people would come into the space and actually get to <clears throat> play on it. Um, and then this was also part of a 20-minute video piece that I did called The Birth of Bardo, um, which is Bardo being the space people, uh, specific cultures believe is space between life and death or birth and life. <clears throat> Here's another example. This is at, in, at Riverside. Um, and you can actually see the frame. So you could go inside and sit in the space. There was a sound component, very minimal, but kind of that's this, and this one was called Living Beyond Our Means. Um, and then there was a big gap for me um, where I moved up to the Bay and was kind of trying to figure out how to engage with the art world in, in Northern California. Uh, and myself and this other artist, Stephanie Diamond, <clears throat> started this, she was in New York, I was in California, started this project where we would send each other uh, tasks to do. So they would range from all kinds of things, from call your mother, say I love you, and hang up, to hug a stranger on, this, on when you get on the subway or on public transportation, to um, plant a seed bomb somewhere where you throw a bomb of seeds. And so we had just hundreds of things, and we would give each other these tasks. And then we, um, a few galleries in New York asked us to do the project with uh, the community. So we would offer all of these very kind of simple tasks. And then eventually we ended up going to Mass MoCA um, and collaborating with uh, a show they had of Saul Lewitt's work. And we would do a task. So for the whole day, she danced throughout all the different galleries of the Saul Lewitt show. Uh, and as you can see, I meditated. So it was kind of this, what was our thing that we wanted to do that was our meditation or our form of therapy. So that was kind of a very transitional off side thing um, that happened. And then I got asked to do um, uh, some more miniatures. And I had kind of decided I didn't want to do miniatures anymore. I decided this was going to be my last series of miniatures. And... Um, these, and I wanted them to be a little more surreal, and I wanted them to be somehow floating. Um, so as you can see, they're not completely floating, but the base is off the ground. I really wanted this idea of them starting to become these more surreal spaces. So the one that you just saw was Capital Gains, and there's trees, money trees inside. I had done so many pieces with chairs in them that became stand-in for characters that I decided the chairs were dying. They were gone. I was not going to do any more chairs. So I put a bunch of chairs in this structure that was almost like a coffin. And you can't say, see it here, but it's really dra dramatic when the light is on because there's all these beautiful shadows and there's a staircase on the, in the back of it. Um, then here's two other ones. One on the left is called Rolando's Ancestors based on um, a lot of things, conversation about colonialism and religion. And then the other one uh, on the right is called When I Was a Little Boy, and there's, um, yeah, you'll see an image of the interior of that. This one's called The Dance. You can see the, moon, the brooms and the mops are dancing in the space. This is when I was a little boy, so there's a carpet on the ceiling with a, a wagon and then grass on the floor and the arrows kind of shooting through the space. This one, um, this is the difference between us. Uh, so there's literally a train track going through the middle of the room, um, which it wasn't my intention to make this, like this is kind of, wasn't it meant to be a personal piece, but it did resonate with me having two parents who grew up very different culturally and kind of think about how that is, um, impacts our our home life and our kind of understanding of who we are and the complexities of who we are. So the last miniature I did, um, this one was kind of ded dedicated to my grandfather um, on my mom's side. And, and once again, kind of had this floating thing. And as you'll see with the next images, was connected to another thing that was starting to happen for me. They're becoming much less like homes and much more like something completely different. So what I ended up doing was I took a bunch of test prints of the photos that I showed you from the miniatures, started cutting them apart. The cutting everything apart became, started to become a theme 
in the work. And it already was with the miniatures because I was taking domestic spaces apart and just leaving traces, trying to compose something. Um, and here, literally taking stuff apart. Sometimes I would put um, dollhouse wallpaper, but most of the times it was, and creating these other structures that from all had characters names, some people I actually knew, but also fictional characters, wanting them to kind of have this multi kind of wanting the architecture to reflect different from different spaces and different cultures but also have this flattening happening so so that your perspective is really skewed and thinking about what happens when we flatten architectural spaces um so i did also did a series of drawings And the houses were coming apart. So I started to just want to focus on the facades. I took the, the miniature um, wood shingles and started to create these big abstract um, wall pieces. Um, and this was one of many that I did for a show called um, Objects of What Remains. So you can kind of see all the little <laughs> details and um, yeah, I, I'm trying to think what I can say about these. This was just a transition for me. It's kind of really starting to think about the stories and narratives about my personal life, but about more general stories and how I could deconstruct them and starting to think about them as facades. 